Thursday. <laughs> just us. Just me and Gabe. I, I I don't know if Josh is going to make it. He is in Las Vegas on vacation, and oh. Tyler is doing F one partying stuff, <laughs> which is completely Josh. acceptable. Josh is uh, visiting the Sphere. He is. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about that. He oh, is really? going. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello, Harry, John. What's up, everybody? Sarah, all the usuals. It's funny, like how you always recognize the same names <laughs> that's good yep kevin what's going on harry so uh man it's been a busy week it has been, well not, craziness not not really actually it's been not nearly as busy as anything we've experienced in the last five months prior to the grand opening that's true but try you know like trying to get back into like normal business functions and stuff so um we were very busy working on the cars this week oh so a lot go. of wrenching my dude my hands are so messed up <laughs> this week oh yeah uh, so i did i did um oh so for those of you that saw my instagram post i posted a picture of the gray f430 spider saying yes. hey what am i doing on this car i'll, I'll post that picture right now. i remember that i was intrigued Yes. So for those of you that didn't see it, okay. Here's the picture. And I am All on right. the side of the audience as well. I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> so you can see I've got the, there's the under tray, the air intake box, the side panels. But the curious thing is I have the A frame out. Hmm. So you have to ask yourself what jobs on a 430 require the a-frame to come out so if you don't know the a-frame is the aluminum big thing you saw on the ground there that holds it's bolted to the chassis of the car and it holds so like it's bolted in the front of the car or the front of the engine bay and the sides of the engine bay and it has a big bolt that goes through it and that holds the transmission mount say something transmission related <laughs> is it though so uh no actually it's not a transmission right. job um i had to replace the valve cover gaskets oh so to get they, access leaking? To, they were leaking so Ooh. to get access to the valve cover gaskets it's thousand times easier to remove the a-frame than to try yeah. and do it with it in place i've done it with it in place and it was just stupid complicated hmm. like totally not worth it yeah you did that on your first 430 right correct i did yeah and it was just brutally difficult <laughs> and totally not worth it so the as soon as i did that you know like josh hill and you know the entire internet was like why don't you remove the a-frame and i'm like i don't know because <laughs> i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> so i was like okay well i'm gonna i'm gonna remove it this time and do it properly so the trick is you once you are pulling out the a-frame you have to support the transmission with a jack because you don't want it to yeah. just like rip, rip the engine mounts well you didn't have you did the first one in your garage right which is regular jack stands yeah yeah so would you have been able to do that? Yeah, yeah, because you just use a regular floor jack to prop up the transmission. Okay. So is the 360 uh, like that too? Yes, exact same. Okay. Yeah. So if you ever have to do it, <laughs> it's I might it's, find I out. I mean, it's a it, you can do it in a day if you spent the entire day on it. Um, but I would say it's a it's a weekend job. You can definitely finish it in a weekend, no problem. Um, I think your definition of day is probably my definition of a month. I mean, I, we were taking it, I was taking it really slow. I was just taking it chill on that. And it took, you know, about two days, two and a half days. Hmm. I think dealerships charge, I want to say three to $5,000 to do it. Hmm. Um, and it's mostly because of the labor. So the parts themselves are a couple hundred bucks, right? The gaskets cost almost nothing. And that car has uh, 30, I think 36,000 miles on it. Were you driving it when you saw that, that it was leaking? 
No, we just, we knew, uh, well, yes and no. So we knew it was leaking because when you would drive it, you could smell burning oil. Okay. And if you drove it hard enough to get hot, you could see the smoke coming off the headers. Gotcha. So that, that one's, that car has got aftermarket headers. It's got header blankets. And so the oil soaked into the header blankets. Mm. So it would just kind of sit there and smoke gently, producing a nice aroma. Yeah, and it's definitely a fire risk with that. So we wanted to obviously get that fixed. Nice. Yep. So that was uh it's one of those oh. we just didn't feel right selling the car with with that, you know, leaking. Now someone's gonna buy it. You got still got three four thirties, right? Yes, we still have three four thirties. Yep. We have a pending sale on the California. Oh, that's good. Yep. So it's um a, it's basically sold at this point. Like it's um the loan's been approved, everything's nice. been approved. It's just sign some paperwork and then you know the deal and send the money and then it's done. Nice. So is, I, that, and, is that their first? It is, I believe, their first Ferrari, yes. Which is a, every time we sell someone their first Ferrari, I'm always like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, it's a great car. Yeah. Oh, that, that car is. So they, they had us uh, have our guy, Ed, Edwin, come out and do the um, leather and paint correction on it. And it's like super, super clean car. I mean, just the paint looks great. The, the interior looks really good. It still smells like a brand new car. Mm. So that's that's uh important when you get in it <laughs> yeah yeah it's got that nice leather uh, i feel like my three 360 it has <clears throat> it's not overwhelming the smell but there's a very faint hint of of leather but also it might just be in my head but it it almost smells like a cigar but i kind of like it it's like ooh, very sure. like like i imagine just like an italian man rolling through the hills in italy with just like a cigar <laughs> in that 360 that, that might just be the leather smell but it's but it's very faint it's not yeah, like yeah. oh it's smoky um and it, i kind of dig it uh, most of our sales are out of state yes so um which is easier for us we do less paperwork that way so we don't care i mean that's you know whatever um, if they do buy it in Texas, we have to ch charge sales tax and then, uh, we're required by the state to like register the car. And actually we have to get an inspection on the car before we can sell it. So that's annoying in Texas or out of Texas. If it's in state, if it's a Texas registration, okay. so we have to dealers can't sell your car without a current registration in Texas. So we had, actually we had to do it twice um, in the last week because we sold the uh, GT 500 sold and that sold to an in-state guy, a guy in San Antonio. And then mm -hmm. the California is going to an in-state guy. So I had to go get inspected. Um, the 360 manifolds don't crack as badly as the 430. So mm. they, they can crack, but they're not, it's not like guaranteed like the 430 it's, but it still happens frequently, but it's just, it's just not the same. Like the, it's for some reason they change. Well, I mean, you know, totally different engine, totally different exhaust headers. So yeah. How many Montana LCs? Uh, not as many as you'd think. I was to say like maybe. Maybe like five, like the one like people who buy it from you. He's asking. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say maybe. I think it's been about five cars. You can you can do a Montana LLC if you live in Texas. That's that's the whole point of the Montana LLC, right? Is you don't have to live in Montana to create a Montana LLC. And that's just for sales tax or for avoiding sales or well, there's lots of benefits. Evading? One is well, it's it's avoidance, avoidance uh, not evading. tax <laughs> avoidance, not tax evasion, right? Sure. So you're avoiding the sales tax, but you also have like no front license plate requirements. 
and their registration process is different. They don't require inspections. They don't they like, you know, all this other stuff. Hmm. So there's a lot of reasons to do it. It's, you know, I mean, it, it makes sense for those, like you see a lot of hyper cars with, with oh, Montana. Yeah. Dude, you see a lot of like RVs get registered in Montana. Mm. Um, all sorts that. of stuff like that. Yeah. New Hampshire loophole. I don't know. What is Travis? Hmm. That New Hampshire loophole. I ought to know about that. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I, don't about know if I took one. advantage of that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Registration fees. Like California registration fees for a Ferrari can be many thousands of dollars. Hmm. To do in Montana LSC, like I think it's usually seven hundred to a thousand dollars. That's it. And then, like after that, you have to pay like a yearly something, but it's like like a hundred bucks or something. I don't know. Mm. It's, it's pretty cheap. And honestly, like the the stupid state inspections are such oh, a waste of time. Seriously. Like, and I, honestly, I feel like the companies that do that stuff have got to hate it because. You make, I mean, they can't be making any money. They're only charging like right. eighteen dollars. Literally, it's <laughs> eighteen dollars for their employee to spend ten yeah. minutes on a car, just plugging in a computer and be like, "Yep, no check engine light." Yeah, it's like who's it benefiting? Yeah, it's so it's such a racket. I did mine when I got the three hundred and sixty back in April. I have to do it again next month because it's in new hampshire it's based on birth month so you have to do it unless you get it within within four months of your birthday so april was farther than four months ago so i have to do it again in november and then every november after yeah sucks so they have inspections is like an emissions inspection no 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 emissions for i think cars 20 or more year 20 or older Well, that's nice. Um, so it's exempt from that, <clears throat> but it's you know still got to get the whatever yeah. inspection. Oh yeah, and it's in Texas the inspection varies. So there's the safety inspection, which is required by the state, but they're actually getting rid of it. But then certain counties have an emissions inspe- inspection. So what really sucks is since they're getting rid of the safety inspection we're still going to have to get the emissions inspection because we live in an emissions County. It's so dumb. Mm. It's not exempt for certain years. No, I don't know how we're actually, uh, if it's old enough, I think it is, but I don't know how old it is. Yeah. You're, 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 get out of his chair. $7. It's so stupid. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay, here you go. Pass, pay your fee. Get that checkbox. Like, I don't think anyone ever gives a crap about it. And every once in a while, you'll find someone who, like, will be like, oh, this doesn't pass inspection. You're like, give me a break, bro. Like, one time, one guy was like, oh, like, to my wife's car. He was like, oh, it, like, it's <laughs> tint is too dark. Oh, come on. On the mini. I was like, <laughs> really? Seriously? So, like, Meg had to go there, pay the whatever you know like wait get inspection they just just to have them say oh you can't pass so i literally take the car drive it down the street to another place and they're like yep it passed <laughs> it's like god it's so stupid yep. Ugh, complete waste of time it's the 10th gary not the 24th oh your birthday yeah oh do anything spiffy not thinking that far ahead yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole, what, 20 days away? Dude, no, we won't. That ship has sailed. We're not talking about it. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> so, like I said, it's emissions in only certain counties. So, basically, if you live in one of the big cities, you've got emissions. If you don't, then you don't. So all those people won't have to do anything. I think it's next. I want to say it's next year. Maybe it's two years. Um, I don't know. I don't really have anything to do with them anymore. So I don't know what's going on with them. Hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, for Windows 10, oh, it's rolling Windows down. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Huh. So they're just stuck down for the yeah. inspection. None in Bexar. Yeah. It, yeah, like I said, it's just county dependent. It's so stupid. <sighs> oh, yeah. Michigan has like really high registration fees. Because it's based, I think it's based on like the original sales price of the car or something like that. Mm. And so the registration can be very expensive. Um, but yeah. Anywho, moving on. So yeah, we we um we got pretty far on the four five eight. Well, Josh did. I I wasn't doing a whole lot in that car. So he, we got in the new Valtronic exhaust. We haven't even been able to hear it at, at full RPM yet because the car was having some misfires and stuff. Like you could just hear it kind of stumbling. So we pulled the spark plugs and they definitely needed to be changed. So we bought new spark plugs, but um, we couldn't find them like anywhere in stock. So we had to order them from uh, out of country. Really? Yeah. Which ones did you have to get? They're, they're, um, they're NGKs, but they're like a very Brilliant. specific NGK. Like mm. it's it's a weird design. I thought it had the same plugs as the 430, but it doesn't. Okay. Because I have a bunch of 430 plugs. I just keep in stock because <laughs> I know we're gonna need them. And I was like, son of a bitch, they're not the same plug. So we had to order a different one. Okay. Did the 812 exceed or not fully live up to your expectations? I mean, it's it's at my expectations. It's <laughs> it's a damn good car it's fast it's fun um it's big they are uh, big i used to be a like an F, f12 was always my dream ferrari and i, oh, I yeah. still love the look of it but and like i know you always said like well mid engines where it's at and but so like now that i have a mid engine and like i appreciate the real just like the driving experience of a mid engine i'm like i don't think and then going into the f12 I think it was Greg's. It's like this is amazing. It sounds ridiculous, but it's it's so big. Yeah, it's like a boat. And I didn't drive it, but I'm like you can tell. And I'm I'm now like you know what? Maybe mid engine is is where it's at. So funny thing, um, Carrie, our friend, you know, he wanted an F12 really bad, and so I took him out for a drive. This was you know years ago before he bought his car. I took it out. I was like, you know, the F12 is great. It is a fantastic car. But I'm like, come come for a ride in my 458. So I take him for a ride and I drive down uh, Old Spicewood Springs Road, you know, yep. where it's, you know, up and down those hills and twisty and whatever. And we're just blasting through that road. Just, you know, early in the morning, no one's out, just hauling ass. And I said, is this the kind of driving that you want to be able to do? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, well, this is the kind of car that this type of driving is for. And he's like, yep, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is exactly what you want this car to do. You want it on a twisty, windy little road like this. You know, the, the F12s and A12s are phenomenal cars, but I don't feel like they're as tossable. Right. Uh, like the front end's not so light. No, I mean, it's a big, heavy car and you feel that when you're driving them. But I mean, in a drag race or just flooring it, they're just stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just ridiculously fast. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. What do I think is the best sounding front engine V12 with stock exhaust? Hmm. Mm. I don't know. F I've probably TDF. <laughs> yeah, that honestly, probably the TDF. If you can call that stock. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's stock, but. Because the older V12s sounded way different. Like the 599, I actually don't like the sound of the 599. It sounds very weird. Um, the 550 and 575 are like really grumbly. You know? Um Although the old, old Colombo V12s, some of those, like, if you ever hear a 250 in those cars, they do sound like it's a very unique sound. It's not this crazy high pitch F1 sound. 
but it's really cool. It's it's just very mechanical sounding. Um, do you think if Ferrari offered the Roma in manual, it would sell like hotcakes? I do not actually think it would sell oh, like really? hotcakes. Because it's the Roma, or I think um, I think the modern cars. I don't know that people necessarily want a manual in that car. Like people like say they do, but do they really? I don't oh. know. I mean, I feel like all set, who knows what the data would show, but yeah. given how desirable manuals are, if Ferrari came out with one, I feel like they'd be sold out before they even. Well, but hit anything the they come out with, they sell immediately. Right. So I don't know. It's a tough question. I mean, obviously, who can predict, right? Because it's, um, yeah. Uh, I think you're talking about the um, that Lamborghini and Ferrari, or is it Lamborghini and Ferrari that they tried to pass and like hit a? Was it like a bus or something? I did not see that. Um, there was it, they were driving super aggressive, clearly in a group, and impatiently tried to pass a car and lost control and took out a bunch of like they took out like a SUV and killed some people and whatever. And it's it was just dumb. It was just stupid driving, like straight up impatient, shitty driving. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, here you go. Um, Jeff's had the FF, F12, H12, and Lusso, and you prefer the FF. Wow. Really? Interesting. That's surprising. I'm surprised to mm. hear that as well. Hmm. Huh. Hauling around a family, maybe? <laughs> I mean, what, what channel are we on? <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's this like race that's going on here in Austin this weekend. When I saw your <laughs> what was going on at the Howard, I'm like, God damn it. Like, oh, dude, FOMO is strong, but I'm just going to like just let it go. <laughs> wish I, you know, dude, not so... wish I was there. We had that uh, F1 party. It was like a small party this year. It was uh, very small. Like not like the last, uh, what, three years in a row we've had big open parties. Um, so it was only like, I want to say 25 people, maybe 30. Um, I don't even know if it was that many. But uh, dude, Tyler, I wish he was here because he made some barbecue Ooh. that was unbelievably good. Like Nice. So good. I'm, I'm gonna like. I told him I'm like I will buy the meat just to have you cook <laughs> it anytime you want because it was so good. Like, holy shit! That's good to hear. He's yeah. on to something. But uh, yeah, so those of you that don't know, um, oh Tyler is at an F1 event because yeah. F1 week. So yeah, that's that's where he is. Actually, he invited me to one. I got invited to like. 10 different f1 events this is how lame i am i went to one <laughs> i went to i went to the um the howard one and that's it i didn't like so what was what was up with that one what was the the backstory is that something you guys have done the f1 event at the howard yeah we've done a f1 okay. like the last two or three years in a row we did uh, an f1 party at the howard um, it was open to all of our viewers and stuff. We had an RSVP. I think we limited it to about like 50 or 60 people. And I think like that's about how many came. Um, it was the last few times it was on Saturday. So it was after qualifying. Mm. But um, this, like I said, this year, I wasn't going to throw a party because I'm like, I'm, I just totally blew my wad doing the, the uh, shop the stub so i don't feel like hosting another party mm -hmm. true <laughs> like i don't feel like dealing with that right now and so I, I wasn't gonna do it and so richard was out of town so no one was like really gonna do it and so at the last minute 
one of the members of the Howard was like, hey, we should have a F1 party and just do like a potluck barbecue. <laughs> so I was like, OK. And casually yeah. have an F1 car there. Oh, yeah. There's an F1 car there. I... Was that the first time one was there? Yeah. So I suppose I can tell the story behind that. Please do. We... So let me um, post the picture real quick for those of you that haven't seen this. I mean, it's so, so outrageous. I'm like, oh, my God. So, yeah, there's... Just um, there last week. Yeah. So, yeah, we were... Um, we were actually at the Porsche versus Ferrari um, concours or whatever at uh, More Speed. And we're finishing up with that. They're doing the judging. And awesome. Um, one of the members of the Howard posted into the Howard group chat just a picture of the car. And I had already talked to Richard and, and knew that this car was, I knew that the F1 car was going to be there. I just didn't know when. So as soon as I saw that it was there at the Howard, I was like, well, gotta go. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, like drop everything. Yeah. We're going to the Howard, you know, like I didn't give a crap about the car show at that <laughs> point. I'm like, oh, I want to go see this F1 car. So uh, it turns out um, it's really weird. So it's, it's a demo car. It is not one of the actual like F1 cars. So basically it has no transmission, no engine. It doesn't even have brakes. Ah, all right. So, but it, it's it's still like supposedly like three hundred thousand dollars or something to make this damn thing. Hmm. So it's like it's full carbon fiber, like it's the real deal. It's the current demo car for this year. So the way it works is, you know, most of the F one teams have a demo car or two or three or whatever. I don't know how many, um, and they bring those cars with them to F1 or other events. And they basically like put that car at place, you know, like events or whatever. Cause obviously they're not going to put like one of the real F1 cars there because they need to be at the track to actually go racing. It does have a steering wheel and it does steer, but it, like we, you, you have to literally put wheel chocks on it to keep it from rolling. Hmm. So, so you could push each other around the parking lot. <laughs> right. But, <laughs> We don't no comments on whether or not anyone has gotten in the vehicle. <laughs> I hope you did. Uh, I don't think anyone of us would fit. Um, oh, true. So the way it works is the F1 teams contract out transportation companies to deal with the car. They don't want to deal with it, right? Like it's it's not a focus of the F1 team's racing mission. It's a focus of the marketing team's mission so i believe it's probably like a different side of the company like the f1 team probably doesn't even know the damn thing exists like they don't give a shit about this thing it's whatever it's a right, demo right. car so the transportation companies get contracted to move these things from each event to each event well for the f1 this year at coda the car was being shipped over early and so the transporter had to store it somewhere. So they just happened to be the, the guy who owns the transportation company happens to be friends with a guy who is a member of the Howard. Mm. And was just like, Hey, you live in Austin. Like where the hell can I put this thing? And he was like, I got a place. It's kind of <laughs> let perfect. Me, <laughs> let me call Richard. And of course, Richard's like, yes. <laughs> So wow. they 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 stored it there, I believe, until tonight. I think it had to go to its first event today. Hmm. So, but it showed up on Saturday of last week, and it was just like, "Holy crap! I can't believe this!" Like, how the hell Crazy. does that happen? Right? It's totally yeah. It's totally the I know a guy thing. Mm -hmm. They were believe it or not, they were actually supposed to get two of the F one cars, but the other one. Um, got scheduled for events or something happened to it. I don't remember exactly what, but anyway, it didn't, it didn't come. Uh, I forgot what, which team it was for the other, the other car. It wasn't, it wasn't, um, Aston. It was another team. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yawning. Um, so yeah, oh. but it was funny. Cause everyone was just like, Holy crap. Like, first of all, 
they are so big now. The F1 cars have just yeah. gotten massive. And the new wheels, that's my first time seeing like the wheels up close since they changed the wheel size. They are huge. Just massive wheels and tires. Just huge. So I don't know, man. Like I, it was it was funny because um on Tuesday when we had our little barbecue thing, I posted this picture. Uh where is it? Yeah, I posted a picture of my GT40 parked next to it, right? <laughs> there. I know. Humble brag. Well, and I wanted it to park next to it really for one big reason. I wanted to see if the GT40 was shorter than the F1 car. Because hmm. the GT40 is only 40 inches tall. It's and tiny. I'm not even kidding you. I think they're about the same height. Like when you really look at right. it, it's like that's about how high the F1 car is. I'm like, holy crap! The GT40 is very small. It is. <clears throat> it's a little toy. It is. So, what cars are currently in stock? We have the uh, 2007 Red 430 Spider with 40,000 miles. That's in phenomenal condition with tons of carbon fiber. We have Richards. 07 430 spider that's nart blue with only 7700 miles on it we have a um grigio titanium with rosso interior 06 430 spider and that's got 36,000 miles on it we just replaced the valve cover gaskets um i actually just drove it like 25 miles today after we changed the gaskets to make sure it wouldn't leak and that was fun it's a good car. Yeah. Um, we have a, a 2011 California, but it, the deal on that is pending. And uh, basically, um, like, if you want it, you'd be a backup. Like, you know, <laughs> this person has already basically bought the car. And then we have the 458 Turdalia, which we're going to um, get running shortly and then probably sell in a little bit. So those are currently the cars we have um so how come the blue 430 doesn't have any fender shields believe it or not um, those, are, those are an option yeah I, that's crazy that they're an option i don't think those should be an pay option. for those i mean i know they are but yeah just... you you gotta pay for that shit <laughs> yeah they're like <clears throat> well i don't know what they are it maybe it depends on the model and the year when it comes out i mean it's usually like, like a couple of grand bucks yeah yeah because you know like on the 430 it has different <clears throat> fenders because they're the for with and without the shields. Yeah, because the shields. Oh, right, because the shields are embossed, kind of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. nuts. You can get without shields. So by default, it's without shields. Then you can get it with the shields. And then if you want to be a big, big dick swinging baller, you can get the painted shields, which oh, are literally right. hand painted. Yeah. And those, those like fifteen thousand like dollars. Special models. Yeah, save some weight there. <laughs> Save some weight. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, that's interesting. O Oki, he doesn't like his... He likes that it doesn't have him. I feel like... I think Jocko oh, yeah. liked that his... What is it? Jocko his, specifically Pista? didn't get him on his... Yeah, um, so some people Pista. don't want him, which is... I mean, it's interesting. It's kind of weird, but the, the Ferrari Shield is actually the Scuderia Ferrari Shield that's not the Ferrari corporate logo. So the Ferrari corporate logo mean? is the one on the front. It's the little sure. rectangle yeah. one. Yeah. And of course the Cavalino. The shield is the race team. So the well, the Cavalino is the same. I would the Cavalino is the same. But, but the, the SF shield, like the actual Scuderia does, Ferrari shield is I can't the remember. Race does team. the front emblem have the SF on it? No. It doesn't it's just, just Ferrari. The, the the horse and then the um Italian color. It says Ferrari. Right. <laughs> I have to look yeah. again. Interesting. Yep. The, uh, you can always I, get the aftermarket one. The I uh, don't believe the shields were ever standard. In fact, they were not offered on a lot of cars. Hmm. Like the Testarossa, if you see shields on a Testarossa, those are not original. Huh. Mine has their, I guess, aftermarket. They're, I don't know, they're kind of like 
very heavy duty um adhe stuck adhesive stuck on stickers. They're not there's stickers, some, but there's some that make some kind of stickers that isn't like doing it just justice. Yeah, right. But... It's a true metal. You have the real metal one that's like actually I don't know what the process is to make it where it's like, you know, yeah, like got the gloss finish and it's not like a sticker. I don't know if it's Fab Speed or who makes them. I feel like one of those companies. Make there's them. some there's some companies that make like some crazy good good ones. Yes, I know it does say it has Fender Shields on the website. Sorry, that was a copy paste. We just got to delete that. <laughs> like it's hard to go through all the options and remember what it does and doesn't have, especially if you're doing the ad when you're not standing in front of the car. <laughs> How to tell if you're is aftermarket or factory. I mean, if it's factory, it'll be, it'll be embossed the into the fender. Yeah. The fender kind of goes in right around where the shield is. If the, if telling. the entire shield is sticking flush on the surface is aftermarket. But I mean, I think, uh, Ferrari people will know that and see that, but it's not like anyone else will know no, yeah. or care. Like they'll just assume it's supposed to be there. Yeah, because it's it's so iconic, right? Like it's just yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've yeah, it's weird. Ferrari Ferrari stuff. Yep. So much room for activities. What are we talking about now? <laughs> the sprinters. Sprinter vans? <laughs> oh my god. This is terrible. Yeah, it's a it's like a like the the shield sits in a uh, indent yeah. on the factory cars. So there's a, there's two fenders for the cars. There's the non-shield fender and then there's the shield fender. Maybe and that's that, why they cost so much cuz <laughs> part of it, yeah. And then if you get yeah, recessed, I guess that's the right word. Um, and then if you get the painted ones, it has the non shield fenders with the painted shield. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. We just talked about it. <laughs> I, just, I just went through the entire inventory. That's all we got. We don't have much right now. And actually we're, we're okay with that because we're entering the slow season. Yeah. And, it's clearly been slow. Like we didn't, we didn't sell a single car last month. It's crazy. You would have been through these; would have been gone so quickly. Oh, like at these prices. Ago. Like I, here's what's driving me nuts: is like we're we're priced below everything on the market, everything, and people are still like lowballing us and and like giving us a hard time. And I'm just like, no. Stupid. What? If hold on, if I sorry, if a vendor has changed their price on their website, in this case 50% off, can we shoot you a message to still order it through you at that updated price? Most likely not. Because huh. unless they're passing on that discount to me, there's not a single product we sell that I have a 50% margin on. <laughs> so most of our margins are like 20% and we offer 10% off most things. So we're only making like 10% and then you factor in credit card fees are 3%. So now I'm only making 7%. And then sometimes there's other things like the shipping. We didn't charge enough for shipping. So we're eating some of that cost. So now I'm losing even more. So yeah, we don't make a whole lot of money on parts and definitely can't price match 50% off. Wonder who's doing fifty percent off. I don't know. Yeah, I'm curious what that is. Yeah, I don't. It's they may have changed. Well, probably haven't changed the price for us. Most likely not. Um, you, you'd have to let me know what product it is, and I could look it up. But I haven't. I'll put it this way: I haven't gotten any emails from any of our uh, vendors that are like, "Hey, we're dropping the price on whatever." So unlikely. Um, are we going to convert any of the 430s? I would say there is a 100% probability we will convert a 430 sometime within the month or two. Ooh. That's a good answer. Yeah. Where are red 430s price-wise? I mean, it's a range. 
120 to 100 or 200 plus for manuals. So good ones are in the one like really clean low mile ones. I would say are like 140 right now, 150. And it depends if it's a spider or a coop and all that stuff. And lots of blah 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 stuff. Mm, I feel I'm, I have to say I'm so. I don't, maybe out of touch is a strong way to put it, but I'm definitely less in touch with prices, right? Because <laughs> you don't care. You don't dollar. care. Yeah, that's like that, it's, it's it's a relief not to have to worry about. And oh, you, they're going up. They're going. You must like, be. You were probably enjoying your car oh, so yeah. much by not doing that. I just took it out. I was out driving for a couple hours earlier oh. tonight. No, the wrong yeah, there. no, it is good. It's like I, I, I haven't looked at even your website for good. the price. Don't. It makes it so that you don't enjoy the car as much when you yep. worry about the money. Yep. Uh, Jeff's saying, I must say my smiles per mile have increased significantly since I got the car back. Falling in love with the car all over again. Good. I'm telling you, like, modern Ferraris are just dying to have a good exhaust. Oh, like, is that the A12 that was in your shop? Yes. Yes, oh, yeah. the A12. It just woke that car up and just made it scream, like proper scream. It's crazy. Well done. Do you think there will ever be a market for replica Ferraris similar to the GT40s? No, not really, because you can still buy the originals. I mean, there there is a, well, so I should say that. There is a market for replica Ferraris, but it's, they're crap. Like, they're not, the problem is Fry sues the piss out of everyone. They're Pontiacs. Does... Yeah. <laughs> Converted to F50s. So the problem is it's different for the GT40. The GT40, there's replicas and kit cars, and then there's the continuation. The continuation is actually a GT40, right? So my, my car is a GT40. It is registered as a GT40. It is not a Ford GT40 because it was not manufactured by Ford. It is a Superformance GT40, but it is... A GT40. So that's like if Ferrari sold the rights to one of their older models and said this other company could build it using this blueprint, that'd be the that would be the equivalent, right? Yep. Which is different than some company saying, "Hey, we're gonna slap a body kit on an entirely yep. different car that doesn't have a Ferrari engine, that doesn't have a Ferrari transmission, that doesn't have any of the same design. It's just a body kit, right? Right." So it's a totally different concept. Oh yeah, the, the re I've seen lots of horror. Like I love seeing the replicas because they're so bad. They're so bad. And I just I never understood the like the replica thing. Like when they have replica Ferraris, because it's purely for looks. Like you're buying it just to get attention. Because the performance, none of the performance is there. I don't know. I can't begin to understand it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it just it's so foreign to me. And some of them are super expensive. Like people spend big bucks on them. So it, it's not even arguably like a kit car. Like like when you do a kit car GT40, at least they actually perform. Like it's got good suspension and whatever. Like it's it's similar to the original GT40. It's not just looking, it's not like they took a you know a Ford Escort and slapped a body kit on it and called it a GT40. <laughs> Oh man. Yes, exactly. I've never seen a properly done Ferrari replica. They all look clownish. Actually, I I have seen a few that look really close. So the Modena whatever what is it called like the Modena GT, which is the the Ferris Bueller car, looks very good it's very close but of course as soon as they start it you hear american engine or whatever it's in it not a, not a ferrari and um i've seen a few like old ferrari replicas that look sort of accurate but again they never have the right engine because no one's buying a ferrari engine to put in a replica <laughs> so just as soon as they start it you just yeah you're just like oh well that's not the right sound yeah, I mean, I, I don't know the older models very well, so I feel like I've probably been fooled with some of the really old ones, the antiques. Yeah, yeah. Meg has been in the GT40 now, okay. and we filmed it, and uh, I'm I'm editing that video. It will be out next week. <laughs> Can't wait. 
is um it's good it's good yeah oh the fiero oh god the fiero replica mm-hmm. looks so bad just a, yeah i remember seeing that yellow f50 replica <laughs> yeah Ferrari has a, a patent for fake engine noise. Oh, God. <sighs> Seriously. <laughs> it's not the same. Uh, uh, do you need to tune an aftermarket exhaust install so no error codes popping up? It totally depends what exhaust you do and what section you do. And so the answer is sometimes. Um, what's your thought on the rally kid who engine swapped the V10 Lambo engine? In it? I have no idea who you're talking about. Me Sound neither. Like, <laughs> I mean, throwing a V10 in the things is always a good idea. <laughs> Oops. Oh, sorry. That kind of day. Oh, man. Oh. It was in a Subaru? Oh, figured it was a Subaru. Wow. How did it fit? I mean, that seems like a nightmare. Well, <laughs> good on that person. Yeah. <clears throat> Would I make a purchase from overseas? I mean, for the dealership, no. There was, if I was buying personally a car that was like extremely difficult to get or rare or whatever, I would maybe consider it. But I mean, it would, it would have to be something where I mm-hmm. could not find it in the U.S. Yeah. Because I don't feel like it's worth the extra effort in most cases. Yeah. Because you're you're still paying import fees. You're paying, you know. You're going to have to go out, fly over there and look at the car because give me a break. Would you buy the car without, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. There's just so much crap to deal with that I just don't feel like it's worth it. Yeah. There's no way you can make money on it. Yeah. From a dealership perspective, it's impossible to make money on. So we need more guests. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. Um, I know Josh is on vacation. Tyler's doing F1 stuff. <laughs> this is yeah. what you got. Uh, I sure. I mean, yeah, I want to visit the Fry Factory someday. I'm not sure what this even means. What happens to deleted? Oh, deleted cat cars. Sorry, I read that wrong. What happens to deleted cat cars in Texas? Nothing. Not much. It might not pass emissions in certain counties, and there's ways to solve that problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know a guy no you don't even have to know a guy that's the best part <laughs> you literally don't have to know a guy all you have to do is pay for the right things and it's taken care of so it's not not a big deal in texas yeah there you go uh, uh, what else? Uh, plans for Thanksgiving and Christmas travel. Uh, we are going to visit my parents. Yep. Uh. Michigan? No, Phoenix. Oh, that's right. Arizona. Yep. Yep. Gull Lake to Caledonia? Oh, someone's in Michigan. Mm. Beats the Tunnel of Trees. I don't know any of those roads. Yeah. Roots. I don't really know. Um, I don't know. I didn't do a whole lot of just like driving around back then as much as I do now. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Here in Georgia, they use a mirror to check for cats with Ferraris. You can't tell because of the panels on their cars. <laughs> oh. They just look for them. It's a visual inspection. They just it's not, the mirror under. They don't do a, like a sniffer test. That makes nice. 
what does Ash think of the GT40? I have not taken him for a ride. I can't. There's, I don't know that there's thing. any way to put a child seat in that car. It doesn't have the proper hooks. Well, it has four point harnesses. <laughs> yeah. So I can't even do like a, you know, like a normal seat belt installation. So I'm not sure that Ash will get to ride that car anytime oh. soon. He's got to be at least 46 inches tall <laughs> or something. Now, is that what the. Uh, I have no idea. I just made it up, but like for, you know, for a ride. Okay. Yeah. I know California uses the actual sniffer test for cats. So, like, it's extraordinarily difficult to get around in California. Put him on the floorboard, he'll take care of himself. <laughs> what? I mean... Wait, put what on the floorboard? I think he's talking about uh, Ash. Like, <laughs> like just, just plunk him down in the floorboard. I mean, he wouldn't go very far, because it's so... All right, you're right. I could probably like down there. Take, whoops, I could probably take him and just like jam him down into that little tunnel where your feet yeah. go and he'd get stuck in there. Yep. And then he oh couldn't my move. Gosh. That's just so bad. <laughs> but that would kind of be fun if you think about it. If you're a kid. <laughs> oh my god, that would be nuts. Just getting thrown around in there in the footwell. Do you see yourself keeping the GT40 more long term? I don't know. That's a good question. It's going to be a fun day when that goes for sale, though. Ah. Well, for whoever picks it up. Oh, man. It makes me sad to think about. Nah. Have you been driving it much? Um. Yeah. I mean, I bought it with 1,100 miles on it. It's already got over 2,000. There you go. <laughs> so I put 900 miles on it already. So I would say that that qualifies. Mm -hmm. My goal is I want, I want, in the first month of having it, I want to drive it more than the owner had it oh, for yeah. six yeah. years. We'll do that. And not a problem. Probably will hit that tomorrow because I'm going to drive it <laughs> to, to the shop tomorrow. Maybe take like the long routes to shop. I found, oh, I found a really cool route for test drives right by our shop. Wow. That's so like that perfect. was one of the things that's been difficult is like, where do we like when someone wants to come drive a car or whatever, um, where do we take them? And because like there's a lot of highways, but like, you know, that's great, whatever. So you go real fast. What do you do? Like you want to actually go on some turny roads and stuff. So there is a loop that you can do. It's about 20 miles and it's got long straightaways. It's got twisty roads. It's got rough roads. It's got smooth roads. It's got everything. It's definitely like definitely going to be the new route I'd take for filming cars. So, how'd you discover it? Just accidentally? I just was looking at the maps. Well, actually, when I took Meg out for her GT40 review, I turned down this road that I thought was one road. And it was the wrong road, and it just kind of kept going, and it was not bad and i was like oh this is a pretty good road and so i'm like i'm gonna look up on the map where i was after we get back and see if mm -hmm. there's like a way to do a loop out of it and there is so perfect yep uh i'm just putting regular premium in the gt40 um it is a 100 manual speedometer in the gt40 like it's cable driven <laughs> so yes yeah, so you could actually theoretically roll it back I mean, you can roll back the mileage in a Ferrari with a computer. <laughs> That's easier. <laughs> it takes less work. <laughs> uh, are you going to bring the GT40 down to British car gathering in Bernie? Since it's sort of kind of British, I wasn't planning to do that. Um, GT40 on the devaluation tour next year. Mm. Oh, <laughs> hell no, dude. I, I don't think I would do that, honestly. I don't think I'd want to be in that car really? that, that long. Oh, it's a That's, comfort thing. Yeah, I mean, it's dude. That's that's tough. Not yeah. to mention it sits so damn low. Yeah, it just would scrape. I mean, it would beat the oh, shit out of the car. Like on our little drive, I probably scraped 
25 times. Oh yeah, that was I felt I felt your pain. Ugh. I mean, at least it's over with. Yeah. I got that over with, right? The front right. Yeah. The nose is scraped. Done. Great. I'm going to put the scrape guards on it. Mm -hmm. As we were joking, now we know where to put the scrape guards. Right, right. <laughs> but mm. you didn't say there won't be a devaluation tour, which is I good. like this one. Any complaints from the neighbors about the cars at the stub, noise, etc.? What neighbors? <laughs> we're surrounded by ranchers. There's there's literally no one. I mean, I guess the, uh, the Murgan Temple is right next door, but I don't think they're there that often. Did I pronounce that right? Mur Mur I don't know. Whatever. It's like a Hindu tempo, whatever. Um, but anyway, no, no, no complaints. In fact, the guy who owns the ranch across the street has swung by twice now just to chat a little bit. So, oh, really? yeah. How is the Mexican lawyer friend doing? I don't think we have a Mexican lawyer friend. Mexican lawyer. Was that one of those videos? Maybe the Italian lawyer? Spaghetti we meatballs. We didn't do it a Mexican lawyer. Huh. I don't know. So miles don't matter in the GT4. Not not like a Ferrari. It doesn't devalue like a Ferrari. I have not done an oil change in it yet. I mean, mm. it's still got brand new oil. Well, 900 miles in the oil. Um, Josh and Tyler, we, uh, Tyler is at an F1 event. Josh is in, um, Las Vegas on vacation. And yes, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding you. You said it, not me. <laughs> Tyler said he might show up. We'll see. He's at an exclusive he's F1 event. He's it looked good. like the drivers were there. Lando and yeah, he said he got into like Zach some... Brown some Dell event or something. Yeah. Who's the other driver for McLaren? Why am I blanking? Oh, uh, Oscar Piastri. Piastri. Oh God. No, Adam is not a Mexican lawyer and no, we're not talking about him. He is not part of this company anymore. So he's no longer a part of the company. <laughs> and that's that lost wages. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I'm, yeah. We're getting comments. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Not... I don't know what people are referencing. Oki said, I said it. Sure, I said it. I don't know what I said. What? Yeah, no. Ah, I'm losing the track here. What's going on? No, he wasn't a Mexican lawyer. He was, he did the. Okay, but anyway, no. Adam is not a part of this company. He will never be back on this channel. There you go. So, but you know what I find funny is, like I here. Okay, actually. I have a few things I want to bring up. It's just kind of interesting, which by the way, I'm drinking water, so I'm not drunk. So this is not like angry Dan. I'm just <laughs> bringing this up. Um, I hate when people are like fan of the channel, watch every video. What happened to this? Something that like happened. And we talked about like for months and months and like, I'm like, really? <laughs> like watch every video. Really, fan? Huh? Like, look, you don't have to sit here and tell me you watch every video. I get it. Like, my own family doesn't watch all my videos. Like, Josh doesn't watch all of our own videos. I get it. You don't have to watch them all. But, um, <laughs> you know, like, it's fine. It's just, I There's think it's funny. Which you, you, you should have a base knowledge, right? Well, <laughs> no, like, it's what's like, going on? just say you're a fan of the channel. You don't have to say watch every video. Like, Fan of the channel. That's cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Watch every video. Okay, so you probably know a lot. What happens to this thing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing that we talked about, like, my favorite was people who got mad because they we, we maxed out the RSVP for the um, grand opening. Oh. And at the last minute, people got mad because it was maxed out. And I'm like, you can't get in. Like, sorry, we only have so much space. And they're mad. I watch all your videos. Well, no, you don't, because we've been talking about this for two plus months. Yeah. In almost pretty, every video. Pretty out there. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. RSVP. Like I was I was like, come on, man. Like, don't it's fine. You don't have to lie to me. Like, you know, I'm I, I am a realist. I understand that not everyone can watch every single video that I produce because I produce I've produced over two thousand videos. 
I don't even remember all my videos. People, that's actually a funny thing. When I meet people in person and they're like, oh, what about that time you did this thing and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I did that? <laughs> like, I don't remember that. Uh, okay. So I'm going to say this once, please. We're not talking about Adam ever again. Ta-da. Done. It doesn't matter what I said in the past. That's what I'm saying in the future. We're not talking about him. But you can guarantee someone someone else will ask. I know they will. And I'll just have to yell at them too. It's only like the 80th time. 80th? So. Much more than that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Some things can't be discussed. There you go. If you know what causes a uh, – let's say hypothetically that there is a company that has um, a very public persona. And then things happen with that company. What do you think happens when things happen with that company? Why would Why would a very public company not talk about something that they're very public about? There you go. Hypothetically. <laughs> what about a mermaid outfit? <laughs> what? <laughs> if you're calling the uh this a mermaid a outfit. T-shirt? I t-shirt? guess I'm wearing <laughs> mermaid. I... You gotta explain that, cyber guy. Yeah, I don't I don't understand that one. I'll just leave this here. For no reason that has nothing to do with anything. Hmm. Okay. Kevin said it. <laughs> uh, moving on. Yeah. <clears throat> if, if I if I had the uh, shoot, what was that um, Monty Python thing? Where he like that, they like, blow up something like, and now for something completely different. That's what we're doing now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I want to do. The subject. I would like to talk about something completely different. Thank you. There you go. Um, I'm excited that there is a Ferrari movie coming out. By oh, the way. yeah. Christmas. Christmas, right? Yeah. I wonder how many of us are going to actually see it on Christmas. How many of us are going to ditch our families to go oh, yeah. see it on Christmas? Definitely. I'm definitely. Definitely going to do that. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe that's why I'm upset because I haven't been able to drink red wine. It makes me sad. Whoops. What? Sorry. Oh, jeez. Wrong button. I was talking about the red wine. That's I hate when I go to click on it and the second I click it moves. Damn it. Um yeah. Normal guy screening. I mean it's just our t shirt vendor thing. Yeah. Why can't I drink wine? I am uh currently back on the keto kick. Really? Yep. E- as of, I guess that wasn't the. Well, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track of your diet. But when did that start? It's like a last Monday. Week. Okay. I knew, so I stopped keto for the grand opening because I knew there was no way in hell I was not going to drink a bunch of beer that day. Mm. And so the thing is, like, once you break keto, it takes days plural yeah. for you to get back into it. So then Fred was staying with us, and people were still in town visiting from the grand opening. And I knew we were going to be going out and eating and drinking and whatever. So I was like, all right, screw this. I'm not going to start keto until after everyone's gone because it's just, it's impossible. Like that's the hardest thing about it is just trying to go out to eat. But anyway, we already talked about this last week, I think. So. Way new- to go, Fred. <laughs> yeah, right. I blame Fred. Um, <laughs> it's yeah it would actually it's like that's too many carbs for keto so the lamborghini movie was atrocious (laughs) it really was 
Yeah. Did you watch I it? Know. I did. I, I, it yeah, I mean, it was, I, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember I, I did not love it. The accuracy Hon- was terrible for starters. Yeah, honestly, I mean, I feel like it's hard to make a good movie out of such a big brand. Like, even the Ferrari one, I, I don't have high expectations. I don't Unless either. Unless focus on something, like, very the problem is to make tell it, a good story. To make it uh, appeal to the masses... Yeah. It's going to be a love story. It's going to be a human right. drama, right? Yeah. Just like if you are, if you think about it, Ford versus Ferrari was a human story. It, they, they turn it into the Ken right. Miles story, right? Ken Miles and Shelby, right? And, and their it's relationship. A good action. It and and yeah. so, but they can't make it a true car movie because then normal human beings won't watch it. All of us would watch it. The population, right? So I fear what they're going to have to do. Um, I think from what I heard, they're talking about Enzo's life in the 50s, which is like, you know, when he was having a lot of his personal shit happen. So at the same time, like, why would why would a non car person see that movie? You know what I mean? Like what what person who isn't into cars or Ferrari is going to go see that historical figure, right? Yeah, I guess if you're into history. Too. I like this question. How many different models of Ferrari would you estimate you've driven? Different models? Well, that's a cool question. I mean, I probably could count I them know all. More right? than me. <laughs> um, let's see. FF, Luso, Luso T, California, California T, <sighs> Testarossa, 348, 3, 5, 5, 360, F8, F8, F12, A12. Mm. Mm. That's 15. Uh, have you driven anything else? Like That's probably about it. That's a good number. Yeah. Definitely have driven more 430s than anything else. I've probably driven, honestly, I think about 100 430s now. Wow. I've probably driven about 30 360s, probably about 30 or 40 458s. Only one 348 Tim's. Driven about five 355s, one Luso, a couple FFs. Uh, so probably over a hundred different examples. Oh no, I, I would say two hundred. Wow, I've probably driven two hundred Ferraris at least. Because there's been no so deal. many, like yeah, I know. It's, it's, which is that's part of the reason I like having the uh, uh, GT40 because I'm like I get to drive Ferraris a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> which I I hate saying it. it makes me feel like such a douche, but it's just kind no, of true. true. So. Uh, oh, the 456, 16. That's right. Uh, I have not driven a 308 or a 328 or a 512 BB. I haven't had a chance yet. Um, oh, I've driven an F40, 17. Oh. Forgot about that one. Petrol Lounge? No. Um, our friend out in... Uh, Oh, 20, uh, 296. So that's 17. Yep. I have not driven the Roma. I have not driven the Pista. Does the Scud count as a different car? I, I would think so. So 18. Getting up 20. Come on, I got to hit 20. <laughs> I, I forget all the ones you mentioned, but... Uh... How many have broken down and caught fire? Only one, I'll have you know, <laughs> has caught fire. Broken down. Uh, I don't know if any have ever left me stranded. I've had things happen that were still drivable. I mean, the F40 is the favorite, right? Um, but I would say in the non $1 million the $1 million and below category, 
Uh, that's tough. I would say it's a toss up between, I don't know, like different days you have different things that you want, right? Like there's a lot of days I feel like I really, really love the Scud. Like that's just, yep. it's up there. It really is like one of the most fantastic Ferraris ever made. The 458 is probably like the overall just best Ferrari ever. But at the same time, I feel like once you modify a 48 to be like Harry's, <laughs> it just becomes yeah, an animal. It's mental. It's just, yeah, it's just like, oh my God. JS asked if I've had to adjust my shift cables. So I have not touched them. Um, Any shift issues? For the most part, it's fine. The, I'm guessing for the, the first four months, it was well. fine. But, but probably the past month or so, um, downshifting into second can be tricky so i have to go but at it cold well no just in just oh just general. all the time but but if i go at the right angle okay i can get it in but i can't just be a neutral and come into second i have driven over 20 575 oh. 550 599 oh how'd you leave those out yeah ah totally forgot about that um so that's 21. oh here we go hold on john if not the GT40, what would you have gotten? I, so I was legitimately looking for three cars. I was looking for a 48. I was looking for a Scud. And I was looking for the GT40. Those were the three cars I was looking for. The problem was I knew I wasn't going to be happy with the 48, 488 unless I modified it. And I didn't know like how much I wanted to do that because we just had done it to Harry's car. Um, so like content wise, it wasn't going to be necessarily as good. I felt like it was going to be kind of like the, um, the four five eight where it's like nothing breaks. It's just, let's go drive it. So there's just not that good of content and kind of the same thing is true of the scud. Although I felt like maybe if we bought a scud that was like high miles, maybe we could do like a clutch and some other stuff. Cause the, so the scud's still a four thirty. It still has the four thirty problems, right? So there was a lot more we could do. I did list the two nine six. Nice. Yeah. Tom, Tom asked my favorite. Definitely, I mean, Dan's four five eight. Oh What's really? I mean, I've driven. So I mean, probably. Let's see, three five five, three sixty, four thirty, four five eight, California. I think that's it. Um, four five eight. Oh, California, twenty two. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And then my oh, no, sixty would be I the second that. favorite. I already said Kelly because the, the I said Kelly and Kelly T. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. The Scud is not a more raw than so is the Scud simply more raw than the four five eight? I mean, it's substantially more raw than the four five eight, but it's it's a different feeling. It's just different. You know, the four five eight is very refined car. You know, the way it shifts, the way it drives, it's comfortable, it's pleasant. You can take a date out of it. You would not want to take a date in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Chat question, what non-supercar vehicle would you want as a play car with a total vehicle budget of 55000 Hmm. Oh, man. That's an interesting question. Fifty-five. I haven't driven a Mondial. At this point, um, uh, let's see. I don't Where know. Did Diablo rank on your list of favorites, having driven the black one. <laughs> I mean, it's a terrible car. <laughs> it's it's kind of like the Murcielago, where it's just so bad that it's fun, but like. But it's like legitimately bad compared to the Murcielago is like bad, but also like good in a way. I would much rather have a Murcielago than a Diablo. So it's crazy you, you've driven a Diablo. Just all these cars. It's insane. Yeah. Whose Diablo was that? Same guy has F40. Oh. Same as Brian. <clears throat> For under 55K, GT350, that's legit. C six Z O six. Yeah, those are good options. Oh yeah, the Scud is more raw than a 
430 for sure. The Scud is just a brutal car. It's not as brutal as the Superleggera. The Superleggera is legitimately brutal. Like, hilariously brutal. I still love that car. That car is... That's one of the few Lamborghinis that I, I would definitely, if I had, you know, a huge stable of millions of dollars and lots of cars, I would definitely have a Super G in there because it's just a riot. Like, it's just, you know, one of those cars that you drive and you just crack up the whole time. You're just like, oh, my God, it's so stupid. It's fun. That's I think that's the thing. I like stupidity in cars, right? Like, the GT40 is completely stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense. Yep. Uh, hypercar, I'm assuming like Pagani's, Konasegs, um, stuff like that. I have not driven anything like that. I sure as um, heck haven't. I'm trying to think of, obviously the GT, the F40 was the most expensive car I've ever driven by, you know, a lot. <laughs> God, that still was amazing. Like thinking back at that, like he was just like, "Yeah, you can drive it," and then like he was like, "Go for it." It's like, holy shit! Which, by the way, when you're driving someone's three plus million dollar F forty, you're you're not as motivated to drive it as hard as you really would like. Oh yeah. <laughs> like it's always in the back of your mind. Like, do not fuck this up. <laughs> Um, uh, I saw Yellow Scud that fell in love with the 430. Yeah, it's a it's a damn good car. I love 430s. It, 430s will always be one of my favorites. They're just it's just such a good car, you know, like great value, fun, sounds good, easy to work on. I was joking with Josh because you know I I so I'm working on the valve cover gaskets on that gray 430 this last week and i was like man this feels so good to work on a 430 because i've done <laughs> so much shit on these cars that i just know them like like i don't even need a stupid um the manual or anything like i know exactly what i need to do i know the bolts i need to do i know all this crap i know what stuff's gonna probably be a problem you know like i knew it was funny it's like i started working on it and immediately i, I saw that they had already um put a, a cut in some of the uh, stupid Allen heads that are already stripped out. I'm like, Oh, yep. That, that, yep. <laughs> Saw that coming. You know, <laughs> it's funny. My yeah. three, six, it'll have to sit for four, four or five months. I mean, it doesn't have to, but yeah. So you could get some good days here and there. If it like, yeah, if the snow melts and it rains, so it washes off the road. So yeah, the other guy with the 360 who might be watching, Jeremy, um, right around town, he said he drives his through the winter. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing that. He's he's a brave soul with his 360. Um, but Which probably tires do you have? What? Which tires do you have? The Super Sport. Um, okay. So they're not the Cup 2s or, no, or the no. PS4S? No. Look up the um, the temperature rating on the Super Sports. I think they can go down to like 30 degrees or maybe it's even in the 20s. So that's the big concern is don't go below the cold rating on the tires. Yeah, I mean, look, I, you just hear everyone does something else, something different in it. Everyone says, oh, I do this and it works for me. Right. Um, you know, I don't I don't really know what the answer is if I. Like, would I want to drive it over the winter? Of course, if there's yeah. a nice day. But I don't know. With the, the salt in the roads, like, I may not take a chance. I don't know. We'll see. It's first winter. Yeah. I mean, always play it safe, right? I mean, I have a, yeah, I have a simulator here, too, that I can get my driving fix. <laughs> and then, I, you know, I'll have something to look forward to come springtime. What's a good non-track tire for the F430? I mean, the PS4S is my favorite tire for that car. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't want to take it out when it's any inkling of snow because that car in snow would just be stupid. What? 
the 430 or 360? 360, yeah, any of those. Oh, yeah. But if it's Maybe like... Traction. My biggest thing is like when it's too cold, the tires can crack. Yeah. So you can ruin a good set of tires just by driving it in the cold. I only reason I'm such a stickler about that is because I did that. Really? In Michigan? Yep. No, here. We had a really cold day and I drove the car and it ruined the tires. They got totally cracked. I had some uh, cup twos. I think they were cup twos. Hmm. And I drove them when it was like 20 something degrees out and they were they were totally destroyed after that good point i don't know what the temperature rating is in the super sport yeah so don't go below the temperature rating on your tires if you want to have your tires remain good <laughs> i'm curious if uh uh anyone is in town for f1 on the chat you're not going are you no no um but today I had two late teen early 20 girls pull beside the passenger blew me an Italian kiss. The driver waved a hang loose from the windows and they were driving a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What were you driving? Your, uh, yeah, what were you driving? Your GT2 RS? <laughs> Need clean version of Keto? I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I mean... Clean... How? <laughs> I mean... I get, oh, oh, that's right. I guess they call it dirty keto when you eat like just tons of meat and no like vegetables. Hmm. Something like that. Is that is that what you're talking about? Oh. Take out in the snow, end up like whistling diesel. No, I can't, to... okay. can't afford to burn a F8 in the cornfield. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think nothing of it. Uh, man. People are like legit upset about that. I don't care. It's like whatever. What the him burning that up? Yeah. Yeah. It's his money. It's dumb, but whatever. Cayman S. Those are fun. <clears throat> Caymans are fun little cars. Dirty keto allows carbs. What? What? There's no way. I don't keto. No. I don't it's think that's right. Get out right away, right? Yeah, then it's not. A, then it's not keto. It's just like eating. That's just called eating normal. <laughs> hey, look! I eat a bunch of meat and vegetables and carbs. Oh, think, you mean you just eat? <laughs> I think you need to make a video, Dan, on, on your keto diet. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't because that's just like, oh my god! Talk about, that'd like, be hilarious keto. if you just did that, like, and like completely serious. Oh. Like, hey, we're gonna talk about my keto diet, guy. Oh no, that's like, uh, what is it? Uh, a, cr a CrossFit? Like, how do you know someone does CrossFit? They've already told you. <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I think people uh, will be concerned for you. Yeah. What do you think are the chances of you buying back your old four thirty or four eight? Um, funny enough, I saw the four, my old 458 came to my grand opening. Um, he actually at one point wanted to sell it back to us, but um, we couldn't come to an agreement. So I would say there's a reasonable chance that might happen at some point. The 430, Frankie actually drove that over on last Saturday, um, to come to the Porsche versus Ferrari concourse. Oh. So I got to see both my old cars. That's awesome that he still has it. Still yeah. driving it. Still driving the crap on it. He's got like, I think he said he's got over 70,000 miles on it now. Wow. I'm like, good for you, man. Just drive the shit out of that thing. So I don't think he really wants to sell that car at all. So I doubt I'm going to ever see that car back. So. Uh, intermittent fasting sounds horrible. Well, I mean... Oh, for three days. <clears throat> Some Ugh. people do it daily. 
Or they just eat from like oh, like yeah, you don't nine. You basically don't eat from the time you basically like you eat when you wake up and you eat before you go to bed or whatever, or or vice versa. Like you know, whatever. I don't know. I I figure the thing that makes sense to me about keto is that's kind of what humans used to eat, right? Like they ate high protein, high fat, and vegetables like grains didn't exist until we started having farming so carbs like in grain form really are kind of a new like new in the scheme of like millennia right (laughs) so whatever because like obviously um fruit you know is a carb but it's like different but anyway that i do miss fruit that was one of the – when I broke keto, the first thing I did is ate a whole banana. I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. <laughs> it's like I wanted a fucking banana so bad. Uh, what was Meg's country cooking video? Oh, she's made some videos. We did some, you know, um, we were doing some vlog stuff when we, were, when we first moved into the house and whatever, okay. and Meg was making dinners and stuff. Uh, we sold that aquarium before we moved. So, how do I get my car to lose weight? Carbon fiber, mm. anti gravity battery. So my, I had my last rate Miata race of the season last weekend, and I had been weighed. Sometimes they weigh the cars at the end, um, especially if you're in, on podium, which I was third place in the second race, and uh, and. I came in seven pounds light and they ended up putting me in last place and which is seven seven pounds is essentially a gallon of gas. Yeah. And I had been weighed twice before in the year and they don't tell you your weight. You're either good or you're not. And I was good in two times before the season, but this one, I was the lowest I was on gas, which I knew. And and yeah, so I, uh, I had to overfill for the next, for the next race. Got third again. They weighed me and I was two pounds over. So, Ooh, so you probably need to add a little weight to the car. Yeah. Maybe like a five pound ballast or something. It's so dumb when you have to add. A it was weight. Yeah. Yeah. It was championship weekend. So they're taking it at a random, random scales. Damn. That sucks, man. Yeah. So my car needs to gain some weight. <laughs> Just focus on the four food groups. Salt, fat, sugar, and food, <laughs> and you'll be all right. There you go. <laughs> all the tasty am- stuff. <laughs> amazing. I heard something about, like, the whiskey diet. Uh-huh. Like, apparently someone was like, all I do is drink whiskey, and there was some whatever food they ate, and that was it. And they, like, lost a bunch of weight. And I was like, well, it's probably not so good for your liver, but that's okay. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. Go get an element fire extinguisher. We've got a bunch of them in stock, just chilling. Yeah. Don't let your car go down, go down in flames. Gabe, feed your car BBBs, BBBs. What's that? Hmm? I don't car know that. BBBs. I just yeah, I just gotta fill it, overfill it. It seems like it's gonna. That's a risky strategy. Why? Well, it could be under. Yeah, it could be. You yeah, know, I mean, yeah, and the races are different lengths. Sometimes they're as short as fourteen minutes I mean, and plus a lap. Sometimes they're twenty honestly, minutes. You've proved that. Hey, you put nine extra pounds in the car, and you still could perform just as well. So, you know, having nine extra pounds in the car <laughs> doesn't really matter. Right, so might as well put it might in well, as a ballast or something. Just to make sure you don't have another. Unless, unless it doesn't matter if you care if you lose or win based on the weight thing anyway. Because like to me, hey, you still want you still got third. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean I don't so think you it, don't get like a trophy or whatever. It, it's not making. I don't know. I, it was my first year. Like eventually, I, I hope to get to the point where it matters so much that you know, like I have to be so scientific about it that but. 
I'm not not quite there yet. <laughs> oh, feeder car carbs. Mm. Get car buts. Yeah. It's 9 30. Holy crap. We made it. We wow. made it. Yep. All right, everyone. I'm gonna Yeah. Spare us the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm tired. Um anyway, thank you for coming as always. We appreciate it. And uh Devaluation Tour 2024, any chance? Yes. No. Oh, come on. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. Almost definitely not. (laughs) Every time I think about doing it, then I start remembering why not doing it, and then I'm like, oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. (laughs) All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining. Bye. See ya.